How's it going guys? This is Jace and uh, this is going to be another Eve video and this is actually going to be the beginning of a new thing that I wanted to start which is going to be basically a um, let's play with Eve Online and I'll try to mix in a little bit of that just kind of some of the things I've learned over my time playing Eve but going to be starting a brand new alpha character so um, this is going to be kind of the first video in going through the process of setting up a new character. So kind of like an introduction to EVE Online for anyone that doesn't know about it is it's a space-based game. And so basically it's humanity got sent through a wormhole and got trapped on the other side of the separate galaxy. And after a long time, I don't know the exact amount of time, you basically want to put these four factions that kind of are the main ruling empires. And so when you start off the game, you get to pick one of the four factions to align yourself with, and they each have their own different ships that they use, different technologies that they focus in, specialize in. And as far as gameplay is concerned, it really doesn't matter which um, empire you choose in the beginning. The only thing it really affects is the location that you start the game in, and as well as the rookie ship that you will get any time that you dock up at a station with, um, if you're not in a ship or you don't have a ship. So it's not a huge impact on gameplay. It used to be a bigger deal where if you were an alpha clone, which is a free account, um, you were limited to whatever race you chose. So if you picked Kaldari, you would be limited to Kaldari ships. If you pick Galente, you'd be limited to Galente ships. If you pick Min Minmatar, you'd be um, limited to the Minmatar ships. And if you picked Amar, you'd be limited to Amar ships. They changed that, so now you can train pretty much any ship type that you want. And um, so it really doesn't have a big impact in gameplay. The really only impact that it has is it impacts where you are going to start. So for the time being, I'm actually going to choose to start with the Kaldari. Is going to be this character that I will create. And so this is kind of cool. Go through the ships and it talks a little about some of the ships and shows some of the ships they, different, they fly. And this is just some of their frigates, industrials. That's the Corvette, the rookie ship. Um, it's an ECM ship. We get a battleship. And then it's kind of cool. It talks a little bit here about the weapons they use. Uh, a lot of missile and rail guns, which is the focus. And then the shield tank is the type of shields that are uh, the type of um, defense they have on their ships, which is going to be shield. You have basically shield, which is your Kaldari and Minmatar, and armor is your Galente and your Amar. Uh, but Kaldari focuses on missile weapons. They do have some rail guns as well, and they have shields. The nice thing about missile weapons, as it says here, is it'll usually have pretty decent distance as well as switching to any damage type which does come in helpful. So, and then it talks about your politics here. It goes into a little bit more detail. So you'd state corporation family, building the power and prosperity of the three pillars of our nation is the measure of a loyal Kaldari. We prize hard work, sharp minds, and honorable conduct above all. Through our service, we gain wealth for our people and merit for ourselves. Empire enemy, the Galente, so this is the four major empires, each one has an enemy. The Galente should return to their natural borders and stop their meddling in other people's affairs. They have no business being on Kaldari Prime, and we will never give up the colonies we worked so hard to build in the border zones. Trade is better than war, but their arrogance leaves us no choice. And pirate enemy, each um, of the four factions has a specific pirate that is their main enemy, that's the Garistas. Dishonorable traitors to the state, the Garistas deserve nothing more than the full wrath of the Kaldari Navy. They sully the markets of our border regions with counterfeit goods and strike out at our innocent traders with cowardly attacks, driven by nothing more than greed. Their time will come, and the cold wind will not be merciful. So that's going to be our focus. We're going to choose the Kaldari, and obviously for each of the different empires that have that same things that it will go through, but as I mentioned, we are going to go ahead and start with the Kaldari primarily, actually, because I like the area that they start in. All right, so this is your bloodline. You can choose. The Atura have been part of the Kaldari state for three centuries, yet their culture has always remained something of a mystery, intensely spiritual. Atura pilots have only recently taken to the stars. Severi. Don't know how to pronounce that properly. Whether engaged in trade or combat, the Severi are masters of focused aggression, highly competitive individuals. They thrive under chaotic circumstances and frenetic activity. The Detias. The Detias are regarded as a face of leadership with sharp, ordered minds and articulate tongues. They have made response 
made the responsibility for upholding the integrity of Caldari State their own. Hmm. Like, we are going to go with uh, Severi. So, nice thing with this, you can actually go into Customize Appearance. Now, you can get incredibly detailed if you want to with your appearance. Um, I am not going to spend a ton of time doing um, appearance because, honestly, you will not see your character really almost ever. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and just click here to randomize. And we'll go through a few different ideas and find something that we like. All right, I think we're gonna go with that. So again, you can customize a bunch of different stuff if you want, and you can make the person as detailed or undetailed as you want, but realistically, all that you're gonna see for the majority of the game is a tiny cutout of their head up in the corner of your screen. So it's not something that you're gonna really see very often. You can make your pictures, and these are different different things you can choose if you want. Um, there's a lot of different backgrounds you can go with. Let's see, I like I like this one here. And actually, I'm going to go with that one. So basically, I have three I can pick from there. That's going to be the one I use. So this will be what other people see when they look at my character. All right, choosing your ancestry. Um, again, these are just for lore and background. They don't affect your gameplay. I don't believe. Mercs, many severely have deep fascination with the brutality of battle. For these brazen individuals, the promise of steady combat is what drives the eager sale of their own services to the highest bidder. Some even hail from families who have followed the mercenary tradition for generations, albeit within the shadows of society. Dissenters, the cold discipline of the Caldari society does not appeal to everyone, nor is everyone happy with the stronghold that corporate rulers have on everyday life. While not outright rebellious, dissenters nonetheless invest considerable time and effort in trying to change the system from within. The state keeps a close eye on these individuals. Entrepreneurs. Severi are not usually known for business acumen, but when they choose to engage in business affairs, they conduct themselves with the same aggression and confidence as they would in the, on the battlefield. To them, business is the, a battle of wills, to be pursued and focused vigilance and ruthlessness. So we're going to choose Mercs. Um, I'm thinking this will probably be more of a character that will be focused on PvP. And um, then you can choose your education. And again, I don't know if this affects any of your skills, but it may have a slight variance. But again, it's not going to make a major change. State War Academy. This is one I'm going to choose, but we'll just read through them all. State War Academy was founded shortly after the Caldari State came into being, while war with the Galente Federation was still in full swing. Due to this, the Academy has always had a very combat-oriented slant, as opposed to the broader scope of ship handling. Science and Trade Institute. Like all Caldari schools, the Science and Trade Institute, from all Caldari business students, from which all Caldari business students graduate, has a very formal curriculum that focuses primarily on the practical side of education. This results in a very dull and tedious learning process, but one that is remarkably efficient. School of Applied Knowledge. The School of Applied Knowledge, from where future Caldari industrialists graduate, focuses mainly on tech 
technical studies and is considered the best school for aspiring engineers. The school collaborates with many leading Caldari corporations, an arrangement which benefits the school, the companies, and not the, and not the least, the students. So we're going to go and choose a state. All right. We're going to go Jace. Now let's check and see if that's available. It is. All right. So we're going to go with that for name. This will ask if you want that to be your portrait. I'm going to say, yep. And now we are going to enter the game with this character. So with this character, I did uh, refer this account from um, one of my other accounts, which is something that you can do is if you um, know someone that plays EVE Online, and I'll try to put a link in this video to my referral link. But if you follow that link, you actually get a free 750 thousand skill points that you can use in whatever you want so we'll look and see if those are in here oh all right so this is going to be our tutorial which we will go through and this is aura she's your assistant i'll have to come back to the other piece all right or says too late captain the ship has been destroyed we may be able to recover some of the data they mentioned first let's try to find a wreck in space to do this, hold down the left mouse button and move your mouse around to rotate the camera. Let's just uh, you left click to circle your mouse around. If you right click, it'll move your mouse, your view without circling your ship versus if you left click, it'll just circle around your ship. Captain, the wreck has been detected by my systems. Pick out the wreck and select it so you can focus your efforts on it. Okay, so we're gonna go over here and there's the wreck. All right. Captain, get as close to the wreck as you can. If you can do that, I will interface with the wreck's emergency transponder and transfer any data. Right click on the wreck and select the approach command. I'm gonna click on approach here. So basically you have, these are, this is where everything important about your ship happens. So right here we can see we have, this is your defenses. So you have shield, armor, and structure, basically from outside to in. So shield is first, then armor, then structure. That gives you a percentage and also an amount that you have. This little bar in here is your capacitor, which is basically your power. You'll see that you have a number and a percentage. And then over on this side, you'll see the modules you have on your ship. So this is, if you hold the mouse over it, you'll see this is a civilian Gatling railgun. It has a fall off range, which is its outside range basically of 7,380 meters and an optimal range, meaning that's where it will do the most damage of 5,280. And it does damage per second of 3.8. And then you'll see at the bottom, there's damage types. So the little red fire is the type of damage. And then the little, it says three HP, that's thermal is the red fire. And the little white line with a little explosion at the bottom, it says four HP, that is kinetic damage type. So it says three thermal and four kinetic type damage. Just captain, I was able to download some data on my memory core. Wait, there's an incoming enemy drone. Ship's overview will be useful here. The ship's overview is a summary of the objects of interest in space. The overview is customizable and you can interact with items listed on it. Approach the seeker to get an engagement range. So I'm gonna click on him. And right here, this is also my approach command. So I'm gonna click approach there. One way to maintain range from an enemy is to orbit it, Captain. You should do this before opening fire. Right click the seeker and select orbit at 5, 500 meters to begin circling. So there's a couple ways I can either click here or up here. I'm just gonna do it up here and go to orbit at 500 meters. So you'll see here my shield is getting damaged. What you'll also see is this will, over time, your shields will regenerate. As you see, it's going up and then going down as I get hit. Your armor and your hull will not regenerate, but your shields will regenerate slowly over time. Captain, try to establish a sensor lock on the seeker. This is necessary for your weapons to target it. Right click the seeker and select lock target. I'm gonna right click here and lock target. Another way to do that is if you hold down control on your keyboard and left click on an item that will allow you to target it. And if you control shift and left click, it will deselect the target. So I'm gonna go ahead and retarget him and at this point, now it's time to engage the enemy captain. Destroy the seeker by clicking your weapon button on the ship's HUD. So we're gonna go ahead and start shooting him with our gun. And again, our gun has a range out to 5,000 is our optimal, so we should be able to hit him very easily. As you'll see here, 
I'm hitting him. You see same shields, armor, hole. So we already have gone ha halfway through his armor. We're now into hole. And here, next couple shots should kill him all the way. All right, he's completely dead. And you notice I'm no longer orbiting, and I now just keep flying straight. Great work, time to go home, Captain. I need you to dock at your home station, where I will transfer, transfer the recorded data to Concord. Locate your home station in the space, or in your overview, and then right-click it and select dock. It's our home station here. You can see it on the map. There's a few different ways you can see it here. By the way, mouse wheel is the easiest way to scroll in and out. So that's what I'm, you'll see me coming closer and farther away. Um, so I'm gonna go here, and you can see there's several different things I can go to, but I wanna go to State War Academy. And there's a few ways to do it, but I went here and I just went to dock. You can also see up here, there's an option to dock from that bar as well. So this is our interview. So you can see up here in this top left corner, you can see my mouse up here. These are, this is your system we're in. This is a constellation, which is a group of systems, and this is a region, which is a large area. It's filled with constellations. So we're currently in the Kisogo system, in the Kimatoro constellation, which is within the Forge region. And um, this is telling the planet that we're nearest to, and uh, it's, this is showing who owns this area, which is owned by the Kaldari state. They're the ones that basically run everything here. The other thing that's important is this 1.0 right here next to the name of the system tells you how safe or secure it is. So in this case, with this being at a 1.0, it can go from 1.0 to negative 1.0, and 1.0 is the safest that you can have. The agency is the primary tool used by capsuleers to discover opportunities available in New Eden. Click on this icon in your Neocom to open the agency. This is your Neocom bar over here. Um, and you'll notice here, this is character selection. This little picture here is kind of what I said earlier. This is the um, kind of the most that you'll see of your person <laughs> is that little piece up in the corner. So you really don't see a whole lot. Um, this is my skill sheet and I just want to start something moving. All right. I'm going to go up into the agency. Concord is grateful we secured the data. They would like us to continue pursuing this mystery on their behalf. Select the Seeker's investigation in the agency, then available missions to find out more information about it. You can select Activate to begin. All right. We're going to go here. And so this is your list of different things that you get for the beginning missions. So right down here, it'll say Activate. And it'll tell us it's going to give us marketing, so it's going to give us a skill if we do this. So we're going to go ahead. Long range scanners have confirmed the presence of seekers in the strange wreckage site, clearing them so the investigators can move in on your mission. All right, activate. All right, click the undock. What's nice here is I can actually just click in this for the tutorial. This is only for the tutorial. This doesn't work in other things that you'll look at in here, but it will allow you to just undock from there. And in here I can warp to. Okay. When you're ready, begin your site. Mission warp to the investigation site. So right here, I can warp to location. Right here, if you see on the left, I can do it also through the um, through the agency. There's also an option. If you right-click in space, it will allow you to select different things that are in space, including, in this case, a mission that I have. It'll allow me to warp. So we're just going to click on it right here on the side. It's nice and easy. Now, this is something that's very helpful if you've never played EVE Online um, to just get a general idea of how some of the different things in the game will work. Um, and also, you get to earn some skills and some money, which is always helpful um, just to be able to buy ships. And that's one of the things that's different about EVE Online than most other games is that when you die in EVE Online, you lose everything that you have on you. So... In most other MMOs or games, you know, if you die, you keep all your weapons and things that you had. You don't lose those. In EVE, you know, anything that you had on your ship, I mean, if obviously, if you have things that weren't with you when you died, you don't lose those. But you do lose everything that you have with you when you lose your ship. This is a ruined sleeper enclave. It seems someone attacked it very strange. Captain, the Seekers are here. Our mission is to eliminate them. Orbit an enemy, lock the target, and activate your weapon to destroy it. So I'm going to go ahead and target each of these and I'm going to pick one to orbit 
So you'll see the modules I have here. I also have an afterburner. And what this does is you look at my max velocity without it is 339 and 20.25 meters per second, but my max velocity width is 522.85 meters per second. So let's take a look at this. I'm receiving three damage from them currently. So we're gonna turn on the afterburner and let's see if that makes a difference. They're still doing four. So really turning the afterburner on in this case hasn't really made any of an effect. If anything, they're actually doing more damage because I'm now closer to them. So in a lot of cases, when you start getting into the larger ships, they can actually help you take less damage by having an afterburner running. So where it told me to orbit at 500, I'm actually gonna move that orbit out to 2,500. And the reason being is that my range with this is actually within 5,000. And so by orbiting a little farther away, it actually should make it a little easier to hit my targets. So you'll see here, because there's three of them, my ship is being damaged a lot more. So I'm actually down to 145 shield. So also with, um, I'm using a railgun right now. With most railguns, you will have ammo. Um, with the Gatling railguns, which is just your beginner ship weapon, you don't have any ammo, so it'll shoot forever, but it also does very, very little damage. To give an idea, a general new player frigate would do damage per second of somewhere between 50 to 70 would be decent, um, if you've got a few skills and a halfway decent gun. Um, so just to give an idea. Congratulations, Captain. You've successfully completed your first investigation mission. All right, so it means we can go back here. Click on this. There we go. I just got a skill. That's kind of cool. All right, so now I can go to the next mission. With the new data we covered, thanks to your efforts, we've pinpointed mined out formation, the location of the sleeper enclave. We want you to take out the perimeter defenses. All right, so we're gonna warp to it again, and this time we'll do it just through the Neocom. Now I'm gonna turn off my afterburner because that will actually make it take longer for me to warp because warping is based on you hitting 75% of your maximum velocity and your maximum velocity is actually higher when you have an afterburner running. And so as a general rule, um, if you have a, any type of propulsion module on your ship, you wanna turn that off before you try to warp because it'll actually take longer for you to warp in most cases, it's not always true. The key change being when you're flying an industrial ship. So some things that are helpful that I have found when you're doing um, anything with EVE Online. All right, hold position, Captain Sleeper Sentry Towers have been deployed. You'll need to use weapon range and fall off here. I'll assist you. If I like the closest target, look to see. All right, so we're 11 kilometers, so we want to orbit them at about 5,000. Okay, we've already noticed fall off is 7,300. So we know by... F if you'll notice, it says I'm missing. Okay, 10 there, we hit it. Hit it and missed. We should be consistently hitting it now that we're within range. And what you have here scrolling is this tells you the damage that's being done to you and the damage that's being done from you. Okay, so up here it says orbit, and this is defaulted right now at 1,000 meters. I don't want to orbit him at 1,000, so I'm going to go ahead and go to orbit, and I'm going to select 5,000. So that helps me in orbit within my optimal range. But basically this tells you what's happening as far as damage. It's right here in the middle of your screen. Um, up here is the health of your enemy, down here is your health. Um, things I was saying are helpful, you can change your types of camera. Um, I generally just leave it here on the orbit camera, but the tactical overlay is kind of helpful because what that does is that actually gives you little lines so you can kind of see how far things are. And if I highlight something, it will tell me what the range is on that so I can see based on where things are with my ship. All right, finish that. Skill training is vital to your progression in New Eden, and the skills you choose will prepare you for your path in the stars. Please dock at your home station when you're ready to begin skill training. So we're gonna go ahead and dock up. Um, but you can see here, 
is so it tells you so this is five thousand meters this is ten thousand meters twenty thousand thirty thousand etc so this is this dotted red line that's how far out my ship can target it's about twenty eight twenty nine thousand meters but if you look here on the mining civilian miner it can hit at ten thousand so you can see at 10 kilometers that red circle and if i go out here to my civilian rail guns you can see five thousand so that's the closer red line the lighter red line out is the fall off so it can hit up to 77,300 but i'm going to get best damage within 5,200. So that's kind of helpful with the tactical and I normally fly with this overlay because it just helps you to see kind of where things are in relation to your ship. And again, if you're looking at top down, it helps. If you're looking from here, a little tougher to see, but you can still kind of get an idea of what's going on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and dock up and do some skill training. All right, so open your character sheet by clicking your portrait in the Neocon. So that's going to be right here. Under the skill tabs, click a category and select a skill you wish to train. Recommend selecting the entire category Spaceship Command and locating the skill also called Spaceship Command. All right, we'll do that. So I'll go here, Spaceship Command, just so double click. We'll add it to your queue. So that is now in our training queue behind Shield Management. Skill is now training. I'll notify you when training has completed. All right, so we can go to our next one. All right, so on to mission three. Accumulate data and latest scanner res results have point to an attempt to build a new sleeper enclave network here in the Empire space. We've located an active preservation enclave. Scout it for us. All right. Now, I saw something pop up. It was Kaldari Frigate. Yep. So we got trained. It, it trained this skill for us, and I believe Gunnery... It also trained a small hybrid turret. So if you'll see over here, this is notifications feed, and it tells you different things that have happened. So it tells you we just did, we just received the skill small hybrid turret one and Kaldari frigate one. So that's the other thing if you're choosing a salt darting race, is based on whatever race you chose so when you go through your um, new player experience if you do the demo it will help you with training up some of those basic skills which again that's a skill that takes like five minutes to train um, which is not a big deal but it can be helpful so if you know that you want to fly galente ships maybe start galente just so you get a little bit of a head start with that all right we're gonna go and warp to the next site So, and as we're going through it, if anyone is interested in following or watching this, this is something I, I enjoy playing EVE Online, and uh, there were a lot of questions that I had when I was getting started that um, I got them answered by a lot of people, but in a lot of cases it was kind of going different places to learn different things, so um, it's something for me, it's fun to go and make videos just explaining some of the things that I've learned through time. Um, so, we are going to... Um, my goals with the videos that I make is just kind of to try and help people to just learn and understand some of the things that uh, I've learned through time and also answer questions that people may have. So with this character is doing kind of more of a playthrough, um, would be happy to hear from you guys what you guys think we should do. Um, so if anyone has an idea of saying, hey, I don't think you should do this or I think it'd be cool if we, you did this with a character, I'd love to hear those and we'll uh, kind of just start doing some new and different things. All right, larger vessels are not always more effective in ship-to-ship -ship combat. The smaller a ship is, the more difficult it will be for turrets to track it. Warp to the site and uh, lock a hostile and destroy it. So in the case that she's making about tracking is absolutely true. So like the missiles that he's shooting at me, depending on what type they are, um, will do less damage to a smaller ship. Um, and you'll see here, as easy as that guy was to hit, it's going to be more difficult for me to hit this one. Captain, this is a large sleeper enclave. It is fully operational. We have to report this, but first take out any remaining guards. All right. So he is going to be actually be harder to hit than the other one is. You'll see that I do less damage to him. But he's also doing less damage to me, so I'm not getting hurt as badly. Um, this is part of where um, orbiting at range is helpful. Um, 
Orbiting may not always be the best choice with a smaller ship. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, with a large ship, you really always want to be orbiting them because the way turrets work is they track. And if you're moving in a straight line, kind of like if you look at, you know, now we're kind of moving in a straight line, it's easy to hit something. But if you are moving, um, it's called transversal, but you're moving other than straight line, it's actually harder for turrets to hit you which is something you, you will use a lot if you're flying a small ship and you're trying to take out a larger ship. Excellent, Captain. You're adapting quickly to the investigation process. All right, go to the agency. All right, target management level three. So they just gave us another skill, which this is kind of cool they do that, is just giving different skills out. So this one, we will get long range targeting. That's cool. All right, a spatial rift has been detected by our scanners. Investigate its origin and return back to us swiftly. Be aware of gravitational anomalies and maintain your speed at all times. You may need to move at speed for this mission, Captain. Let's test the afterburner. So active modules like afterburner use your ship's capacitor to boost the vessel's capabilities, even grant it for new ones. You see your afterburner underneath your weapons in the ship's HUD. While active, the afterburner increases your ship's velocity. So I've already been using this, but I did not point out. You'll notice that my capacitor is not at 100%. This is in part because I was utilizing my afterburner, but also when you warp, depending on how far you are warping, it takes up a portion of your afterburner to complete that warp. That's just something to keep in mind. There's a spatial rift, Captain. It's being created by a sleeper gate of some kind. We've been spotted. Chase down the seeker and eliminate it, Captain. Activate your afterburner to increase your ship's top speed. So we are going to approach him. We have our afterburner on. We're gonna go ahead and target him. Moving faster will make you harder to track and make it easier to keep up the keep the enemy at your optimal range. Lock and destroy the seeker to complete the mission. But you'll see here, Every time my afterburner goes, you'll see my capacitor drop down. So that's kind of the effect of that. So in this case, I'm just um, straight up approaching him. Because he's a small ship and he's actually going to try and orbit me. But then once we get closer, I'm going to go ahead and say orbit at 5,000. So, and you'll see down here these little, um, these are the chat channels, and so when you join the game, you are joined immediately into the just a, an NPC corporation, which is your just starting corporation you come into, um, based on who you choose as far as State Academy is what I chose. Um, so, if I go to corporations, which is going to be, this little, this is the hamburger menu, if you ever hear anyone say hamburger menu, we're talking about this little Neocom menu in your top left hand corner. So if we click on that and go to social corporation and we'll see I'm part of the state war academy. So this will be determined by who you um, start choose as you're starting for your character. I'm gonna choose to approach him because I'm getting out of range. And this is tells you what the tax rate is, which is basically as you kill things that are worth right here, 10,000 isk, 11% of that will be paid to the corporation. So. And war eligibility, this is perfectly helpful, is you cannot be declared war on. Um, so, you know, if the players, corporations want to declare war, they cannot do that um, to the NPC corporations, which is very helpful. Um, kind of what I was saying here in the uh, earlier, um, where declaring war has anything to do with it, is where it says security status of 1.0. That is... All right, time to upgrade our ship. We need to dock at a station. So we're going to go to dock up. This 1.0 basically is how secure your system is. So anything at 0.5 and above, um, if you attack another player that you are not at war with, um, that has not done something criminal, so they don't. there's a criminal flashing suspect that you can get, or you have not agreed to a duel with, there are certain things you can do to get around it. But if you haven't done any of that, and you basically attack an innocent person, in anything higher than 0.5 space, um, NPC ships will show up and they will kill you. And there's really no way to stop it. They will they will just completely pull your ship down and they will destroy it. Now, that being said, based on how high of the security status you are determines how quickly they show up. I don't know the exact numbers, but if you're like 0.5, I think it's somewhere around 20 to 30 seconds, maybe longer before they show up. If you're in 1.0 space, they will be there almost immediately or pretty close to immediately. So um, generally meaning if someone tries to blow up your ship, they can still blow your ship up in high security space, 
but they're going to get blown up very quickly. So it's something that generally can be safer. All right, long range targeting level two is done. Upgrades. All right. We've decided to reward you for your efforts so far. New upgraded weapons are made available. We hope you find them useful, particularly the coming tasks. And this will give us signature analysis too, or skill once we complete it. Open the highlighted fitting window in the station services panel. Okay, so over here on the right, these are our station services. And we want to open the fitting, which is right here. The other way to reach it is Neocom menu ship fitting, or the one I use all the time is this initial shortcut is Alt F. We'll open your fitting window, which you will use a lot. And EVE Online is your fitting window, which basically opens this window, which allows you to add or take things off of your ship. Up here in the corner, you can simulate fit. So if you can't afford something or you don't have it right now, but you want to know what it would look like if you had that, you can add different things to your ship and it will change everything. All right. In the fitting window, locate your primary weapon in your high slot, right click it and select unfit. So right click here and we're gonna select unfit. All right, and this is our uh, miner. We're also gonna unfit that. So we're not gonna be doing any mining. This is our item hanger. And we're gonna drag these. So these are two um, rail guns. So if you guys remember, we were at like three DPS damage per second. All right, so now we're going to just drag ammo. You can just drag it onto your ship like that. Now we want to put this ammo actually in our ship because we're going to, if you don't carry the ammo when you run out of the initial ammo, then you're going to be in trouble. All right, we went to 8.6. So still not great DPS, but it's actually doubled what we had before. And our range went out to 24 kilometers. So we have a lot better range with this ammo. All right, so we actually finished that one already. Um, some things with the fitting window, you have high slots on a ship. This is where your weapons generally go. Mid, mid slots here, which is where your propulsion and things like shield upgrades or um, what am I looking for? Um, shield upgrades as well as like electronic warfare, um, different things like that will go there. And your low slots um, can be different things to help with potentially making your damage for your guns better, as well as if you're in an armor ship, this is where your armor tank would go generally is in your low slots. Mid slots also are where you can upgrade your capacitor. Now, if you're trying to look at fitting, you can look here and you can see skins. That's if you want to look at different skins for your ship, but browser that opens up where you can do different modules, holes and fits. Usually what you want to do is look at hardware. And what you can do in here is you can generally say filter by skills. So only show me things that I have the skills to fit. And then you could go through and select different things. So you can say low slot. Okay. What low slots can go here? Now, in this case, I'm going to click simulate. So it'll actually let me see what things would look like. So I can go to low slots and I could say, what if I were to put some upgrades for my guns on here? And I go to turrets and bays. I go to weapon upgrades and I go to, so now this is the hard part because if you don't know which ones go to what, that would be difficult. So ballistic control systems. Now the nice thing is if you click this little eye, it will tell you what it does. So it says a computer system designed to monitor and guiding missiles in flight, allowing for superior effectiveness and lethality. Okay, penalty using more than one type of this module or sh similar modules that will affect the same attribute on the ship will be penalized. So basically, the more you use of something, the less effective it is. So if you put two, it's less effective. It's not, this, it's not you know, if they both give 10%, you'll get 10% times two, you'll get 10% by the first one, and then maybe 7%. I don't know the exact drop off for that. But if you click on attributes here, it will tell you rate of fire bonus plus 8%, missile damage bonus 7%. We're not shooting missiles, that does us no good. So we don't want that. Entropic radiation sinks. This is gonna tell us, this is for um, entropic disintegrators. Okay, so that doesn't help us. Gyro stabilizers. Speed of projectile weapons. That doesn't help us because we're not shooting projectile weapons. Heat sinks. Okay, that's an energy weapon damage efficiency, efficiently, thus giving them more, the, giving, allowing them to be fired more rapidly. Okay, we don't have energy weapons, so that doesn't help us. Magnetic field stabilizers. Grants bonus to firing rate and damage of hybrid turrets, which is what we have. Blasters and railguns are both considered hybrid turrets, so that's what we want. So if we say, okay, let's add this. Boom. All right, so our DPS, if you looked at it before, was 8.6. With one of those, it's 10.1. Now let's put another one on. 
11.5. So if you remember 8.6 to 10.1. So about the same. Let's see. 10.1 is 1.4. Yeah, so we got 1.5 increase on the first one and 1.4 increase on the second one. So a little bit better. But you'll notice our ship does more damage. And if I go over here to the shield, so you see that's in the offense. So you have basically five different things. So offense is here. How much damage do you do? Then you can break it down. You can see turrets do 11.5. And with the reload time, because it takes you time to reload when you run out of ammo, 11.2. And if you have other types of damage, you those will show up here as well. Alpha strike is how much damage you can do on your first shot. So basically in one shot, I'll do 27, potentially 27 damage. Defense, this is tells you your EHP or effective hit points with your current resistance. So I have 220 shield and it takes 860 seconds to recharge. And then this tells you my resistances. So for different damage types, so remember we talked about these do thermal and kinetic. So I have 27% resistance to thermal, 45% resistance to kinetic. So basically if I got hit with something for 100, it would take off 27 of that damage of thermal, 45 of that damage for kinetic. 54 of that damage for explosive and only eight per eight of that damage for EM. So right, generally for shooting something with shields, unless they have prepared for that, EM is a great thing to shoot at a shield ship if they haven't properly tanked their ship because there's a huge hole here. Now, if I were looking at armor, you'll see that EM is my greatest resistance, 50% versus 45 for thermal, 25 for kinetic, 10% for explosive. So let's just look at what I could do to fix that. So if I go to shield, Shield resistance amplifiers EM. I could go an EM ward amplifier now. I have 38% resistance on that instead of the, what was it? Let's see, instead of the 8%. Another way if I have more capacitors, I can actually go to a shield hardener, which is even better, and that will give me 54%. And so what this does is this is an active module that runs. And so you can just see, you can play with different things on the ship to see how would this affect my ship if I were to put it on. So enough with that for now. We're going to go ahead and exit out of that. And you'll see because it simulated, none of that was actually done. Nothing happened because I didn't actually do any of that. So we're going to go ahead and select our next one. Battle for the Ruins. Activate. We're going to undock up here in the right-hand corner. And go see what other kind of trouble we get into. All right, it's time to put everything you learned into practice. Travel to the site and eliminate the targets. All right, I'm going to click warp two. Now, one of the things that I like to do, you can either fire all of your weapons independently, or there's this little button here that says group all weapons. In most cases, you will have your weapons grouped. There are some different cases where you would want them ungrouped, but as I would say 90% of the time, my weapons are always grouped, so you can just shoot both weapons at the same time. If you're gonna change different ammunitions, you can do that at the same time. If you're gonna reload, you do that at the same time. So you'll notice in here, I can, once I start shooting, I'll be able to reload. So we're gonna actually close this out just so I have a clear screen and close that. All right, you can see here we have two sentry towers. Now the nice thing is we can hit these from a lot farther away than we were before, up to 24 kilometers. And this one is outside of 11. So we are going to say, what is our optimal? Our optimal is 19. So we're going to orbit him at 15 kilometers. And our afterburner, because that will make it harder for him to hit us. Great, we already killed him. So you can see how much more quickly I was able to kill that one versus the other towers we shot at earlier. Now in this case, I don't have unlimited ammunition. so if he's at 26 and I can only hit to 24, it would be pointless for me to actually shoot at him right now because I would actually be wasting ammunition. You'll see here, I now have 77 rounds before I have to reload my gun. All right, we're within 23, still outside of my optimal, so I'm still gonna wait. Um, Alt-C is one way to open your inventory. Another way is to go and just click this box right here. That's your inventory. You'll see I have 840 charges, so I'm not on the verge of running out because what I have in my ship will allow me to reload my guns. If I don't have anything in my ship, then there's nothing for me to reload into my guns. All right, we're going to orbit him. Again, we're going to orbit at uh, 15 kilometers. And I can't target him right now because he's actually outside of my targeting range. So another way to tell that is if I go to my fitting, 
down here under targeting, 29.7 kilometers. It tells me how far away I can target another ship. So once he's within 29 kilo, 29.7 specifically kilometers, I'll be able to actually target him and then attack him. You'll see it's still too far away, and it'll tell you here must be within 29 kilometers. 30. There we go, 29. Now again, I can target him, but I don't want to start shooting yet because I'm not going to be able to kill him because until he's within 24 kilometers, I can't do any damage. So I'm going to wait to start shooting. All right, 24, so we're going to start shooting him. You're going to see right now I'm not doing a ton of damage because I'm on the edge of my range. I can hit him, but it's still at the very edge. As I get closer, you'll see I'm not missing, and they're start, they'll start to do more damage. We'll see here, I already got his shields gone. He's halfway, almost all the way through armor, so he's going to die pretty quickly. There we go. There's another one. So I'll orbit him at 15. Now you notice you can click, I'm hitting F1, and so it'll tell you here what your key is to use that. And it basically F1, Alt F1 through F whatever. Um, and I think the bottom one is Control? Yeah, Control F1. So based on what row, and you can move these around, so regardless of where they are on your ship, you can move things back and forth. So if I want this to be on F8, I can move it all the way to F8. If I want it to be down here on Control F9, I can move it down there to be on Control F9. Generally, I keep my guns on F1 just because it's easy to <laughs> it's easy to hit. Um, this is where if you hear people talk about Eve players or uh, especially in null security spaces about people being F1 monkeys, uh, that basically means all they know how to do is sit there and hit F1, which is not technically true, but in a lot of cases, if you're on a big fleet fight, that you may be doing not much more than just targeting someone and then hitting F1, which is where you'll hear the name F1 monkey. Now, when you get into actual real PvP, not real PvP, but if you get into PvP on a smaller scale, uh, there's a lot more than just <laughs> hitting and shooting. But if you are in a large fleet battle, which is the ones that make the news, the ones that are running super slow, where there's thousands of people in the system, there's generally not a whole lot more going on than you just hitting F1. <laughs> All right, we're going to orbit him at 15 kilometers. And you'll see these actually looked a little bit different. So these are um, based on the what these look like here. You can tell what kind of a sh what class of ship. So the red triangle is called a frigate. And then when you see the red triangle with a bar underneath it, that or triangle with a bar, it doesn't have to be red, um, depending on whether it's an enemy or friendly, it could be different colors, or neutrals or gray. Um, if it's triangle with a bar, that's a destroyer. And then if you have kind of the triangle with a box attached type shape, or I guess it's, a, it's called a hexagon maybe, um, but the larger, um, I guess, thicker triangle that we also shot earlier, that's going to be your cruiser. And then if you have that larger triangle with a little box at the bottom with a little line underneath, that's going to be your battle cruiser. And then your battleships are kind of like a, I'm trying to figure out how to describe them, but it's like a triangle with two little tails almost. Um, you've got a triangle and then two little tails on the two triangular tails at the bottom of it going off to each direction. And those are going to be your battleships. And then when you get into capital ships, they have their own crazy... Um, indicators for capital ships, but we're not going to run into any capital ships right now. So, all right, awesome. So we just finished that one. So we're going to go back here and see what the next one is. All right. All right. So now we can go into cool and go to the military. These are the tutorial missions we're going to go do. I exited out. All right, so we're going to go filters. So specify up here to look for agents. We're going to go to career agents. Military career path. Ah, three jumps away. So right here, we're going to select and we're going to go set destination. So right here. Oh, we can also do that here. We can set destination. Cool. And perfect. So now, if you can see up here, it says I have a route now, which is basically saying, oh, I'm going here. And so it'll tell me I'm going to go to Yurlen first, then 
Unpass, and then that's going to take me to Uetra. And so I can look over here now, the Erlen, which is my next place I'm going to go. That gate is open, so I can click here. I can either warp to it, or I can just say jump, which will warp me to the gate and then automatically jump me through. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our afterburner. The other way to do this is you can also right click on um, the next one here and you can jump from there. That's another way to do this. Now, when you're routing, there's a couple of things you should know is if you click on this A here, um, it'll um, show your route to path and space, which is fine. You can choose how to prefer it. So you can prefer safer, prefer shorter, or prefer less secure. Um, you can avoid systems where a pod killing has recently occurred, avoid systems where your avoidance list. Um, and so what's nice is that you can actually choose different ways you want to travel. So as a general rule in the beginning, you probably want to stay with prefer safer. But the thing to keep in mind with that is in some cases that will take you Oh, there's a battleship icon. Ah, oh, sorry. This blue right there. I'll see if there's one on the other side. Um, there we go. Okay, this is the icon for battleship right here. This is that little like blue with the tails at the bottom. I was talking about. So that that is your um, battleship. And I don't think there's any cruisers here. The the frigates. Yeah, there's no cruisers here. All right. So you can use autopilot. I would highly, highly, highly just recommend using the autopilot, which is it tells you to do right here. It says, oh, click autopilot. Here's the thing to know about autopilot. Yes, it will automatically take you to your destination, but instead of warping you to a gate at zero, the autopilot will warp you to 15 kilometers, and then you will go slowly up to the gate and then jump once you get to it, which will take you, depending on how fast of a ship you're flying, anywhere from a minute to maybe two to three minutes if you're flying a really slow ship um, to get up to the gate and so that's something to keep in mind is that if you're not sorry if you're not sort of if you're not paying attention your ship can actually get blown up in the process of you autopiloting through space and so you just want to keep that in mind that probably not the best idea so i don't use autopilot unless i'm in a ship that i really don't care that it's just like there's literally nothing in the ship i'm in a ship like this it may not be a big deal but the other thing is it's also slower so if you're actually going to be sitting there at your computer it's faster to just do it yourself than to autopilot because it'll take you twice as long at least to autopilot depending on how far you have to go so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, also, just pay attention to where it's routing you. Um, when it says safest system, that's not always the case. There could be some different ways that it considers safe that may or may not actually be safe. All right, we're going to go to our inventory, and let's see if we have redeem. Oh, I have to be in a station. I believe this should be my skill points from my other, from doing the referral, the civilian skin, skill pack. But we will see, because I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done it recently, so I don't know um, what they call it now. All right. I'm going to go ahead and dock up at this station here. So this money you'll see up here I'm receiving, it says there's a credit. Um, you can find out your money and you can go to finance and wallet. Now, one of the things that I add shortcut. Yeah. If you right click on anything in here, you can add a shortcut. So you can say, I want that out there. I like to have my wallet here cause you can see what, how much money you have. So at the moment I have 135,000 ISK, which is not much at all. Um, but I also am flying a free ship and I haven't had to pay for anything. So that's nice. Um, doing these combat missions should help me get a better ship which is nice. Um, I'm going to stop my ship. So to stop your ship is control space bar. will stop your ship from flying just because you can see some different things here. Okay. So this here is your cruiser. So that's the icon. Like I said, kind of looks like a house. Um, and then battleships, obviously are these ones. And then your frigate is this one here. And then we already saw the destroyer earlier. This is an industrial. So this is actually a player. So that's an industrial ship right there. This is a, um, this is what I'm flying, but that's a 
Corvette. Um, here we go. We have a battle cruiser. Okay, so you have a battle cruiser here. And this is a mining ship, a venture. So it has this little kind of round looking thing. And then these other things here, those are stations and things like that. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and dock up. And then we should be able to take on the beginning missions here. So we're going to maybe do one mission and then we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And then on another video, we'll do some more of the missions. Over here, you have your agents. So you can see guests, offices, hangars, agents is one that we're looking for. And so we have a few different options. We have exploration, business, advanced military, industry, military career. Now, the nice thing I would recommend if you're brand new to do all of these agents, because you get a bunch of free ships, you get a bunch of money, and you get a bunch of... So you can basically, I think if you do them all, it used to be, and I don't know if it's still that way, but around the around about $20 million, $20 million isk, which, again, is still not much money, but compared to, like I said, compared to the... 135,000 that we have now, that's a huge amount. All right, so we're going to go here to redeem items and we're going to redeem. So, this is a login thing that's going on right now with an Eve Online. Every day you log in, you get certain rewards. So, that's a t shirt crate and a civilian skill pack. We're going to redeem those two items. And there we go. This will redeem and directly inject 750,000 skill points to Jace Masters. Are you sure you want to proceed? Yes. All right, I have 750,000 skill points. So see here, I now have unallocated skill points, which are basically, I can use them to train anything in here that I want. Now at the moment, I'm not going to use them. I'll try to use those as we go. So what I'm going to do right now, though, is I'm gonna adjust my skill training queue. And I'm gonna say, I wanna train Kaldari Frigate to three. And it's gonna see, now as an alpha, you can only train 24 hours. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't be training more than 24 hours, but you cannot add more than 24 hours at any given time. So I'm gonna train up our Kaldari frigate skills at the moment, because that will affect how good we are at shooting things with our frigates. And so I'm gonna take that all the way up to four. And then I'm gonna go over here to our fitting, and that's actually engineering skills. Um, CPU management is already at four. That's fantastic. Power grid management's at four. That's great because these are helpful for fighting. Um, energy grid, I'll get that up later. But actually, that's kind of that's pretty good. The two that I really wanted to be have hired those two are good. You want to get these two to five as quickly as possible. And I can see here it's a nine-day train. I'm not going to do that right away. But if you are trying to decide what skills you should focus on. These are two skills I would highly recommend focusing on. Now, you'll see it takes 256,000 skill points to fill them all the way. Technically, I could fill those now with the 750,000, but you wanna be very careful about unallocated skill points because those are incredibly valuable that you can, because you can use them whenever you want for whatever you want. So if you can just focus on training things, that's always good. So, all right, we are gonna to go to do a career agent and then we're gonna wrap up this video. Okay, so we're going to start with military career path. Start conversation. Cash flow for Capsuleers part one. Sure, I've got something for you. Carissas or thugs are harassing miners in nearby astro nearby asteroid belt. Let's clean up the area. You may have to rush the targets and hit them at close range. And I'll say down here, declining a mission from a particular agent more than once every four hours may result in a loss of standing with that agent. So you'll see here I have effective standing of zero. If you have negative standing, that actually is a bad thing. It will hurt you. Um, you'll not be able to take things with agents if your standings with a certain faction gets too low. Um, and then also if you get too low with agents, then they might get mad at you. I don't know if level ones will. I don't think you can affect career agents, but with other agents, it is a big deal. The following objectives must be completed to finish this mission. Clear the pirates from the asteroid belt, as your agent has requested on behalf of the group of miners. So right here, it tells me I'm going to be attacking Garistas. You can right click and show information. This just tells you I'm fighting the Garistas, so I know who I'm attacking. Um, the re following rewards will be yours if you complete this mission. One times 75 millimeter Gatling Rail 1. So that's a different type of rail gun. And the following rewards will be awarded to you as a bonus if you complete the mission within five hours. So if you complete a mission fast enough, you get an additional bonus. In this case, 2,000 
um, charges of antimatter, which is good because I have long range ammo right now. I do not have close range ammo. So we're going to undock. And right here we can go warp to location. We'll see here I have 28 charges. I'm going to go ahead and reload. Um, just that way I don't think I'll run out of ammo trying to shoot them. But just in case I'm going to go ahead and just do reload now. Save myself from having to do that later. So just a thought process from you guys, if you want to give some input on what you think I should do with this character, please feel free to let me know in comments um, if there's a certain type of gameplay you would like to see. Um, the things I'm leaning towards right now to get money are things like exploration and then also um, I want to use this character just to focus a lot on PvP as well. So those are kind of the two that I'm thinking about at the moment, but I would love to hear from you guys what you think you'd like to see as well. All right. And I am going to try and keep um, the focus on uh, doing these on the Let's Play and not uh, spending a lot of time on this character outside of that. I may do some minor things such as skill updates, but I may even just try to make some shorter um, skill update videos even if I am just hopping on to update some skills. So just so you guys can kind of see, because updating your skills and having a clear path is really a good way to go um, with... Um, EVE Online, it's really important. It's uh, something I actually have not done great with on my other characters. And so I think I'm actually going to do is work on putting together a skill plan. And I'll probably actually showcase that on another video for you guys. So you'll kind of be able to see a, what direction I'm planning to go with this character. So if you'll notice his shields just jumped up. Um, that's because his ship is fit with a shield booster. Which is a very common thing in shield tanked ships is a shield booster where they will actually regain shield. It's a repairer for shields. And so it's something just to keep in mind is just because you broke the shields of some ship doesn't mean it's going to die because if it does have a shield booster, you have to be doing more damage than the shield booster is repairing. Now, I mean, obviously we were doing a lot more than that and you saw how quickly he died anyways, but it's just something to keep in mind that it's not a glitch if you see the shields on a ship suddenly jump back up um, that's not a glitch, that is an intended gameplay mechanic. And it's something you definitely want to keep an eye out on, is that you'll very likely see that when you are fighting other players. Alright, so you'll see here, it, there's, um, these are wrecks. So it says empty, but if I look here, uh, it contains loot items. Now, in most cases, in these beginning levels, they're not going to contain a lot of great stuff, um, but it's always good idea to check because you never know what would be in, what could be inside so I'm gonna click open cargo once you get within 2,500 meters I can open cargo hey look at that we got some ammo which is great um, so we can always use ammo so we got plutonium charges 100 charges again right it's only worth 982 isk so I can't really sell this but if I wanted to I could right click here and I could put these in my ship and you'll notice I went from 8 damage per second to 19 but if you'll also notice, I went from being able to shoot out at 24 kilometers and 19 to 12 and 7. So my range got cut in half, but I do more than double the damage, which is also the way it usually works. If you have a long range ammunition, it's going to do less damage. If you have a high damage ammunition, it's going to have a shorter range. So it's just something to keep in mind as you're looking throughout that. All right, so we're getting ready to wrap things up here as we dock up. And again, please let me know if you guys have any thoughts, um, things that you'd like to see. And uh, definitely love to get some ideas from people on that. All right, so now we're going to click. If you can see here, I've accepted, so I'm going to start a conversation. And I can complete the mission. There we go. My standings increased, and I was able to receive those. Now, in this case, I already have two railguns, so I can't fit another one, so I'm just going to take those charges. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and leave it here with Jace. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, look forward to seeing you next time.